I'd love to hear how you, uh, how you, how you even came to meet uh, Jeff Buckley. Um, and then we'll take it from there. It was sort of uh, seemingly random that the way I met Jeff, that uh, this, this was a time where people had um, cassette tapes inside of these boxes, these answering machine boxes, you know, on hardline phones, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized that a lot of young people are digital natives and they, they might be going head scratch like answering machines. They may, may not have even ever seen one. So yeah, you had your cassette tape, you know, loaded answering machine. Uh, but I, I met uh, Jeff's girlfriend at that time, Rebecca, on the street because she was walking around with one of her friends and who I knew uh, he was a musician. So I sort of just went out to say hi to him and then I met her and then wow. he told her I was a drummer and then, you know, and then she got my number and then that number got passed on a piece of paper to Jeff. And then Jeff picked up the hard line and called me and left a message on a cassette, you know, on a, on a cassette tape that I happened to hit rewind and listen to mm. and then, and then called him back and probably left a, a message on his answer machine, that kind sure. of thing. So now, where uh, was he in his career at this time? Did, like, did you know who he was? Was he nobody? Like, where was that in this? In oh, this? I had no idea who he was. And I had no idea who his father was either. Mm. I mean, I knew who some of Jeff's father's peers were. And sure. I, I would think that those were mostly, I guess, Southern California, 60s and some 70s artists you know, within the songwriter scene of that time. So some of those people became really famous and were, mm -hmm. you know, the, some of my first memories of music were probably people that Tim Buckley, Jeff's father knew. Yeah. But I didn't know him. So yeah, it, Jeff had, had, I believe done his concert. I guess it was a Shanae concert or it was a concert at a church wherein the labels were there and he kind of unveiled his, it was a solo performance, I think before I knew him and he had sort of unveiled his all all the different things that he had like mm -hmm. his voice his guitar playing his his interpretation to songs I think he probably played some of his father's music mm. and then the labels were there and they're like you know we love this guy mm -hmm. then he sort of signed a record deal and he was looking for a band to come in and and solidify to the degree that they could make the record and tour it sure now very interesting so you know it's it's so much of you know they say being at the right place at the right time but to some degree also like was the the friend that you met a musician uh jeff buckley's girlfriend's friend or was it just a friend in new york yeah he was a musician well here's an example i was interning at philip glass's studio on <laughs> broadway as like a a, a recording assistant mm -hmm. which only lasted a little while you know but i was learning a little bit about how to just like spool up some tape on a on a on a on a 24 track studer machine and stuff like this like you know and then like being present for a recording session and just seeing what's happening while also being hired on you know sometimes to go into these same studios and record sure uh, as a drummer but i i was in there and, and and so i met this guy named john moran who i believe was probably signed to Philip Glass's label, like okay. Glass Note or something, he might have been signed or he had affiliation probably with Philip Glass and the studio and the record label and the people that worked there. So he was a composer. I think he's a bit more on the avant-garde side of things. As Anyways, Philip Glass was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I, I, I knew him through connections related to my internship, sure. uh, which is very strange but true well so that's my that's my point actually is the fact that like you know a lot of times people say that it's like you know a lot of the the industry and the relationships or or, or making something in the industry making it in the industry is uh you know being at the right place at the right time but i would argue and based on the 115 conversations i've had in these interviews is that it's being at the right place that, like they call the, the other quote is um you know like uh, you create your own opportunities to some degree if that makes sense. Like in the yeah. sense of like the only reason you happen to meet Jeff Buckley's girlfriend who got you on the studio or on the, on the, you know, the, the gig with Jeff, well, because you were putting yourself out there and, you know, you were in the studio trying to get learn and work and yeah. whatever the case is like, it's like you, you, you make your own luck essentially, you know, like opportunity comes to those who are putting themselves out there. If that makes sense. As opposed to yeah. like, Oh, I'm just going to sit around and hopefully something happens. No, you were actively pursuing something. And that's when that, luck happened to come if that's what you want to call it you know what i mean yeah all i think the idea of luck let, let's say this that both the idea that you create your own luck 
or you create your own opportunities. Let's say that's a narrative. And then let's say that the, I guess the other narrative would be, you know, you don't create your own opportunity. You're just lucky. Exactly. Okay. I think that sometimes, believe it or not, you know, that latter example is actually weirdly correct. Sure, sure. But but I st- I think it's a much more superficial and 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 a totally uh, I think it's a much more superficial narrative that is often wrong. Sure. And in addition to that being often wrong, it's often wrong because it is it's misleading. It yeah. it's like it tells more lie than it does truth. Yeah. Even though it even though it can sometimes be true that someone is simply lucky. Yeah. Okay. The other narrative, which is you create your own opportunity. Let's not even talk about luck. Exactly. That is a way, way deeper sort of narrative that's based off. It's maybe not always right, (laughs) but there's a way in which you can use that narrative to probably make it eventually always right. And and, and the way that, that that works for me is, is if you shift your view toward this type of lifestyle which says Mm -hmm. every single thing that happens for me not for someone else but for me i'm going to take that as an opportunity everything sure even something that seems like it hamstrung me and absolutely devastated me or crushed me i'm still going to take that and 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 put it into the gas tank of where i'm trying to go yeah and and so that is the thing i think that that uh is a That's the thing I think they talk about. There's a lot of ancient literature that talks about this from many different cultures, I think. It might be worded differently, of course. Sure, sure, sure. But I think that's that's well represented throughout history as a kind of a foundational principle that is, it's supporting of both the individual and it's supporting of the society and and the collective. Yeah, 